Coming up on today's show, we're going to be talking about Io DeSumo and if he is possibly not returning to the Chicago Bulls. we got an update on that. And then the second half of today's show, we're going to be discussing if the Bulls are the favorites for Christian Wood. My name is Patrick Seatman. Welcome into the Bulls Report. we got a fun show to talk about today because obviously you guys know I'm a big fan of Io, and we got a negative report that he could possibly not be returning. But guys, this is why you guys hit that subscribe button any single time we get any piece of news, rumors, whatever it may be around your Chicago Bulls, I want to be your go-to Chicago Bulls YouTube channel. We're closing in on 4,000 subscribers. We need 367 of you guys to hit that subscribe button. So if you guys haven't already and you're new here, lock us in as your go-to Chicago Bulls YouTube channel. Now let's talk about it. Io DeSumo, could he not be returning to the Chicago Bulls and possibly be heading to the Toronto Raptors? This is reports that started to come out late last night or late afternoon yesterday around the Chicago guard Io. But it was actually a Bulls Twitter account that kind of broke this news at first uh, on Bulls Twitter because it came from Dan Bernstein from 670 The Score. And he said Io DeSumo will likely not return to the Bulls here. And we'll get into this full quote here in a second. But I'll start off. I don't fully trust this report. You know, when it comes to Bulls news, unless it's coming from Casey Johnson, Joe Cowley, or Daniel Greenberg, I'm really not listening. So take this with a grain of salt. I don't think that this means for sure no chance Io comes back to the Bulls, but just something to monitor with this whole situation with him being a restricted free agent. But this is what Dan had to say on 670 The Score about the Bulls guard Io DeSumo. He said, it is increasingly unlikely that Io DeSumo will be back with the Bulls. This is from sources close to him. He doesn't believe he will be back either. We were hearing Toronto is interested and is a likely option. And Toronto makes a lot of sense for Io DeSumo. Uh, you know, he fits kind of their certain archetype of player, you know, these long, you know, defensive orient oriented uh, types of players in that backcourt. I think Io fits that mold. And Io, you know, the production standpoint from year one to year two. The efficiency, that's the number one thing that stands out to me here. Like the efficiency going from 52% from the floor to 49.3% uh, from year one to year two, but specifically that three-point shooting ability. That going from 376 to 31.2, that's the number one thing that stands out to me because Iowa was still good in year two, in my opinion, especially with what he brought defensively, but it's the efficiency side of things where he really kind of took that step back and he wasn't the same guy he was coming out in his rookie campaign. And I do think even if the Bulls were to lose Io DeSumo, I think they would be kind of fine at this guard spot. Like, I'm a huge Javon Carter fan, obviously another Chicago kid as well. Went to Press Virginia. He was able to pick you up 94 feet, and he's just got that dog in him as well. But then also Kobe White, that scoring combo guard, where I think he could kind of fit into that the typical, like, Lou Will six-man guard coming off the bench. Could give you 30 on some nights, but he could also have you give you nights where he's two for 11 two for 13. So I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world if the Bulls were to lose Io because I do like what they have so far. But I got five reasons on why I would keep Io DeSumo in Chicago. Number one, I've been pounding this table saying this all offseason long. He's an absolute dog defensively. Like his six foot frame, being a point of attack defender, I think it speaks volumes to especially the modern day NBA. When you want to pick up these guards, you know, right at half court, just because, you know, these guards nowadays, they can pull up from half court. So having a guy like Io to really pick him up, you know, for the entire defensive possession. And if you would pair Io with Alex Caruso and Javon Carter, I've been making the argument that the Bulls could have one of the best defensive backcourts in the NBA. And he's also young. I mean, he's only 23 years old. Obviously, he went to University of Illinois for two years, played with Kofi Coburn and really, you know, made himself or made himself a household name for college basketball fans with what he did there. And I just think his overall, you know, you know, trade value with him being younger, you know, this kind of helps his case on another reason why I would bring him back. But man, that overall size, and it kind of speaks to his defensive prowess a little bit, but being a guard that is six foot four and have a six foot eight wingspan, that's special, man. And you know, you know, defensively, a lot of it is heart, but also a lot of it is just your overall size and your overall archetype. And Io DeSumo, six foot four, six eight wingspan, check that box. And then also, this is my probably my favorite one on this list. He's a Chicago kid. He went to Morgan Park. He grew up in the city, grew up watching Derrick Rose. Uh, and then he obviously went to University of Illinois. And then the Bulls took him in the second round. Like, I 
I just don't understand how you could just let this kid walk. He's been in Chicago his whole life. He clearly has a passion for playing basketball and especially a passion for playing for the team he grew up watching. So I just think, you know, being a Chicago kid just adds a little extra uh, icing on the cake for a reason why I would bring him back. And then also a trade piece. Like, let's just say it's the trade deadline and another team is like, saying to themselves, like, you know what, what do we need to get over the top? What do we need to kind of put us put ourselves in championship contention? Let's go get a strong strong guard, especially, you know, defensive oriented guard like Io. Maybe they could throw the Bulls a first round pick for the young guy. So those are five reasons why I would keep Io. But I'll ask you guys, would you bring back Io DeSumo? This is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So YouTube, they're going to hit you with an ad break right now. Go down, answer today's pinned comment and give me a Y for yes or give me an N for no if you would bring back Io DeSumo. You guys already know I'm saying yes to this. I've been pounding the table about this all off season long. I want Io DeSumo back. Main reason for this would be just the defensive prowess that the Bulls would have. If you could legitimately roll out Javon Carter, uh, Alex Caruso, and Io DeSumo every single night, I think they could hound other teams' guards, and it would really give the Bulls an identity on the defensive side of the floor. But some advanced numbers that we'll dive into here to wrap up the Io DeSumo segment on today's show. Overall, the shooting with Io last year is really why he struggled. You know, the catch-and-shoot number being at 31.4%. Pull-up numbers at 37.3. Very solid at getting to the rim. From the free throw line down, he was 62% from the field, but it's the three-point ability, man. And that's, uh, you know, it's a modern-day NBA. you got to be able to have a catch-and-shoot three in your game if you want to see the floor consistently, consistently and get just consistent minutes in a strong or in a good NBA rotation. 31.2% from deep on 2.4 attempts per game. But on the defensive side of the floor, this is why I love them. Deflections per game. This is one of my favorite stats when you're judging defenders in the NBA. That's just getting hands on balls. It's a very, uh, you know, I compare it to like pressures to sacks as like deflections are to um, steals in the NBA. Like getting a pressure, in my opinion, is more important than getting a sack. I think getting a deflection is more important than actually getting the steal. It just shows your overall activity and just overall hustle. Charges drawn per game, the dude is getting about a half a charge per game. That's just winning the Bulls an extra possession. Shots contested, he was actually higher. I think he was in the top 20 for guards in the NBA this past season at 5.2. And then his defensive rating at 114.4. Overall, to wrap it up, Bulls bring Io back to Chicago. Now let's talk about the Bulls. Are they the favorites to sign Christian Wood? There's been a lot of speculation how the Bulls are going to use those last couple of roster spots. Could it go to a Javon Freeman Liberty who's been balling out in Summer League? Or could they look at a P.J. Washington, Christian Wood, Kelly Oubre? Because obviously we know the Bulls do have that disabled player exception from the Lonzo Ball injury. But Daniel Greenberg, he uh, uh, tweeted this earlier this morning, and he said, the Chicago Bulls are suddenly viewed as a potential threat that could keep the Los Angeles Lakers from landing free agent Christian Wood. This is incredibly interesting because, like I said, the Bulls have exceptions that they can play right now. You know, the disabled player, originally it was 10.2, but for the Bulls to use it and stay under the tax, it would, they would only be able to offer 8.2 million of that. The mid-level, they still have $5.7 million left. Uh, they gave the other half to Javon Carter. And then the biannual, they still have that at 4.5. Then also the vet min at 2.0. Obviously, I would prefer to bring in Christian Wood for the veteran minimum. Obviously, to save money, and I think it would be a, you know, a great value pickup for the Bulls. But also, I wouldn't hate if they brought him in on the disabled player exception. Like the Bulls this offseason, they said they had the green light to go into the luxury tax. If you use the DPE, you would be going into the tax, and you would be uh, crossing over that first apron of the new CBA. But why not? I mean, the Bulls, clearly they want to run it back with this group. Clearly they're trying to win games. So one year, $8.2 million deal for Christian Wood. Sign me up. Because over the last four seasons, you can't deny this guy knows how to put the ball in the basket. I mean, averaging over 16 and a half points per game over the last three years on incredibly solid efficiency. Like Christian Wood, in terms of just an offensive talent, he's incredible. I mean, anytime a guy can average damn near 20 and 10 for a three-year stretch on shooting over 50% from the field, then also over 37% from deep, I mean, if you just look at the numbers, you're saying, why wouldn't the Bulls bring in Christian, Christian Wood? Well, here's the problem with him. He's been on seven teams in seven years. He doesn't really have too much care for the defensive side of the floor either. You know, it, you know, it's funny enough, like our Mavs fans here at the chat sports offices here, when talking about Christian Wood, they say he's a vet men guy. Like they wouldn't give him anything more than that. And that kind of speaks to just overall how, you know, NBA fans view his games. Also problem in the locker room and him not being the most coachable player on the NBA floor. Also multiple reasons. 
why he has been on seven teams in seven years. But I'll ask you guys before I give you guys my thoughts on this in a second. Would you sign Christian Wood? Let's just say Christian Wood's agent comes to the Bulls and said, hey, we'll play here for the disabled player exception. One year, $8.2 million. Are you saying S for sign or, or, or are you saying P for pass? Let me know down in the comments section. My overall breakdown and my thoughts on Christian Wood, there's no denying. He is a very talented basketball player. You don't roll out of bed and averaging 20 and 10 on incredible efficiency if you're not good at basketball. But he has yet to contribute to winning at all. Like Christian Wood, and when is he, I mean, I don't even know if he's actually played in a playoff series because obviously the Mavs missed it this past season. Overall, I just think Christian Wood getting it done on the offensive floor, check. But what does he do for the winning and overall just being a winning player? I just, I just don't really think he contributes to that at the highest level. But in terms of how he would fit in on this Bulls roster, I think he actually checks a box the Bulls need to hit, and that's having a backup big that can come in and score when Nikola Vucevic and Patrick Williams are off the floor here. Like, obviously, Patrick Williams, he's more of a, I guess you would say he's a more defensive-oriented player here. But if you could float in, you know, Christian Wood and kind of give a ying to the yang of P-Dub, and uh, obviously Wood, you know, Patrick Williams being the defensive-minded player and Christian Wood being the offensive-minded player, I think that would be a great addition to this Bulls team, and it would just add, a you know, another sense of depth to this roster because I like what they have in that starting lineup. I like their wings. I like Levine. I like the Rosen. But obviously the Bulls with, you know, Caruso, Terry, Drummond, Kobe White, I like it, but I don't love the bench. And if we would get uh, Christian Wood, I would actually love the Bulls bench. And overall, guys, I'm just getting excited for this next season. Like, I was in the camp that the Bulls should blow it up. They should rebuild, and they should just move on from this unit, trade Levine, trade DeRozan, see what you can get. But they want to run it back, and I'm starting to get excited for this year. Obviously, I don't think the Bulls have, uh, you know, NBA championship potential, but I think they could sneak into that sixth seed and maybe win a playoff game if they reach their match poten max potential. But I can't wait for October. I can't wait to get this season started. That's why you guys should hit that subscribe button as well. Thank you guys for joining us on today's edition of the Bulls Report. Any news and rumors that come out around your team, I want to be your go-to guy. So lock us in, hit that subscribe button, and as always, go Bulls.